A vertex is a single point in 3D space. If you have more than one, they're called vertices. Now, if you draw a line between two vertices, you create an edge. Do this two more times, enclosing an area, and you can create a face. As a modeler, in Blender, you have the choice to make faces from as many edges as you desire. Three, four, five, and so on. Three-sided faces are the simplest face and what all other faces are broken down to. They are the fundamental surface that you can have. Now, four-sided faces are called quads. They will predictably divide infinitely, which is essential for subdivision workflow, which is something we will cover later on. Modeling using quads comes with a lot of benefits, including the ability to deform predictably and provide great control of what is known as edge and face flow. Five plus sided faces are called n-gons. They have a bad reputation and you will often hear that they should be avoided at all costs. There are a few reasons for this. They often cause bad shading where a model's surface looks broken or uneven. And you can see here, some of the reflections look jagged rather than smooth. And this is because they're not only made up of n-gons, but triangles as well can cause these problems. They also prevent any edge flow and often need some sort of tidying up to work properly in the end. However, they also come with a huge benefit of potential time savings. So used in the right place, they are absolutely brilliant. Overall, it is important if you're making any model to understand that the method of making doesn't really matter. The end result is ultimately what does matter. And if it works out for you using a particular method rather than another, that's absolutely fine. As you progress through this series, you will gain an important insight into what works for you, what doesn't, and which circumstance that applies to. So let's take a look at this in practice and put it all together. So you can have multiple vertices that you then go ahead and join together with edges. You fill in those edges, you create faces. In this case, this monkey head called Suzanne would become very familiar with her as we go through. This is an unshaded object. It has no light input. So let's go ahead, turn lights on and also add a texture to color in the surface. We'll learn lots more about this later on. Now a texture on the surface is coloring it in a certain way. It looks like it's made from cobblestone or a rock, but we can also change the surface qualities of the floor underneath. Let's make it more reflective. And why not add Suzanne here into a wonderful environment? So you can light a scene using an HDR image, or in this case, we're using the built-in sky texture. Now using a texture, we can control the reflection on the surface, making it look more like water. Using another texture, we can make mountains grow out of a seemingly flat surface. Lots and lots of power is at your fingertips with Blender. And finally, let's go ahead and scatter some trees across the landscape. All of this is possible in so many ways within Blender, and it's so much fun, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you create. And I'm sure like all of my students before, you're going to create some amazing things. So now we've got this fun out of the way, let's go ahead and hop on over into Blender.